<laughs> Welcome to our first ever video podcast. Two thousand five. We're getting real fancy around here. We're getting fancy <laughs> because this guy right here to my left. <laughs> Pastor John Egan. Oh, Woo! Thank yeah. you. This is his idea to yes. hit, hit record on the video camera, and I was like, why have we never done that? <laughs> so already John's bringing innovation to us. So uh, I'm, I just want you guys to get a chance to hear a little bit from um, John Egan, um, who you're, I'm sure you're familiar with, but you'll get more from him today. Um, and then an old friend from the Thousand Fathers, uh, Michael Massey. Great to have you oh, here. Mike oh, Massey. so good to be are. back. And yeah. Yeah, so this Woo. is obviously the brand new season of the Thousand Fathers podcast. New, it's a new season of the whole ministry, yeah. not just the right. podcast. Yeah. Um, and a new season, especially for you and I, but even um, joining in to John, like what God's been doing and knitting our stories together. And yeah. I'm so stoked. It's good <laughs> yes. To be so, um, yeah, welcome, guys. This is, we're in the worship offices that are still under construction. Everything's new. It's all, <laughs> all new. new. And you might hear some hammers yeah. driving nails into walls. That's how new this is. So this is like liquid paint. Yes, yes. But um, we're in it, man. And, you know, you're all in it, too. You're going through your own stuff. So um, just excited about having you join us today. And because everyone who probably pays attention to this podcast has heard plenty from me, um, and is somewhat familiar even with Micah from being a part of the Thessalonians team, I thought maybe we could start with you, John. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because um, a lot of our leaders will have known your songs, sung your songs, sung the songs from New Life, but they probably haven't gotten to know like up close mm. your story, mm. um, even some of the story of the church, and just yeah. wondered if you could give whatever context you want okay. um, for how we got here today. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is a thrill, beyond thrills for me, uh, an answer to prayer, a delight. These guys are, you guys are just mm. um, uh, kindred spirits cut from a sweet, s- similar spiritual cloth. And um, this has just been amazing. So to sit here with you in the worship offices uh, is a dream. So uh, you guys have been here just a few months, really. Three months. Uh, yeah. Three months. Three months. Three months. Yeah, yeah, right at three months. Unbelievable. But the relationship started, you know, years ago mm-hmm. in a way, you know, with yes. uh, Glenn Packiam and you. And, right. Yeah. Um, so... In a way, this feels like uh, it's a homecoming, you know. So <laughs> I have I have been at New Life for uh, I just July one. We're shooting this here today on July. I don't know. It's, yeah, I don't whatever know what it is, is now. Eighth, ninth, tenth. Um, <laughs> was my nineteen years at New Life. Wow. Yeah. It's well and, done, man. Thank you. And um, it's I'm forty one years old, and uh, you know you you've. I've seen it all, you know, I've seen the good, the bad, uh, the ugly, but I just, uh, I love our church, I love our community, I love our people. Um, as much as I, you know, I, it's, I'm not trying to, you know, hang this plaque on a wall that I've chosen faithfulness for 19 years. I Really, I, the way I look at it is that the church has continued to choose, you know, to keep ex- just accepting mm-hmm. me. Um, that's how I look at it, oh, and no. it's been really, uh, it's been honor of my life. I met my wife here on my first day of work, 19 years ago, on July 1, walked in, graduated graduated from college in Oklahoma, moved up here, and then July 1 was my first day of new life, and I was hired on to lead worship for the youth group, and walked in my first day, saw Paige, my wife, uh, asked who she was, she was dating some other guy, (sighs) yeah. But it all worked out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All, I couldn't, all couldn't worked run with out. these horses. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, uh, they hired me on to, you know, that I got. A, I was finishing up college, and a friend of mine, he said, hey, I just became a youth pastor at New Life, and um, we're looking to hire, you know, someone to lead worship for the youth. And I just thought, how big of a church is this that you're hiring someone just to lead worship for the youth? And... Said, so, well, it's don't. They said, don't get too excited. It's for like six hundred bucks a month. <laughs> and I'm a college kid. Like that's right. plenty. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. making it rain. <laughs> I remember so those days. I said, that's fine by me. They said, yeah, we're gonna pay you like out of a budget. It's not even like salary, you know. So that's that's totally fine. And uh, so I came up here, and man, I fell in love with these these kids at a youth group. It's just it was you know it was. I came up here in the youth groups like 150. Mm-hmm. kids it's just like oh my goodness i was new to leading worship i was a drummer mm-hmm. um so and they just they took me in and i just learned how to how to worship and learned so much about the presence of god doing worship with them for hours upon hours mm-hmm. upon hours yeah. we do retreats and we just do four hour worship sets and mm-hmm. the whole thing and um 
So it was it was it was from the beginning really special and really kind of overwhelming. And I was learning, and um, but then one of our youth pastors said right away, said, "Let's do a prayer and fasting event." Mm -hmm. It's called desperation. Who are we without the Lord? We're desperate for the Lord's presence. And we, so we did a fasting event. Uh, she's like, sure, sure. Who's going to come to a fasting event? So a few hundred kids in this building, actually. There's a chapel here. A few hundred kids packed into this this building here. And we prayed and fasted for three days. And uh, High schoolers. High schoolers. And we led a ton of worship. Uh, and two months before we did that, somebody said, I got a bunch of gear we could record. Um wow. So you guys should write songs for it. I was like, oh, I've, I've never written songs. So I wrote three songs. Wow. And the other, uh, Glenn Packham, Jared Anderson, some of those guys, those, those guys wrote songs. And we just tried them out yeah. at this event. Re <laughs> you know, press record. We didn't know. And we thought, how cool would it be to package this thing and just give it to our church or give it to the kids who came to the event. So, and, you know, Integrity Music uh, hurt, caught wind of it. And, they wanted to hear us. We sent them to the roughs, and they were rough. And they were so <laughs> rough. I, mean, I, just, I was learning how to sing, and sure. mm -hmm. I'd never been in a studio to overdub anything. And mm -hmm. um, So it was kind of off to the races, and really just very underqualified. Just, I just always felt like, wow, just the Lord can truly do what he wants to do with who he wants to do it with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was, I mean, that movement of desperation that's lasted, you know, 19 yeah. years i mean next year is our 20th anniversary of desperation Incredible. we've had thousands of kids uh come through um there's been multiple events that have come off of it it's birth ministries it's birth uh you know people going into into business in certain ways and starting prayer movements on their on their campuses and so it's been incredible and then we've we've just written as much as we possibly can to support you know that movement uh, but then really to also, our, you know, a parallel thing was our heart for our own local church was just growing and growing and growing. Um, the church wasn't the means to the end to be a part of the desperation thing. Um, so we, we were writing as many songs as we could for our church as well. So mm -hmm. we just, we just really in the soil of new life has always been this kind of creative to create, you know, we, to be a voice and, and we love echoing what's going on around the world and what the Lord's doing in worship and mm -hmm. songs that have been written. We love that. But there's something, that's, me personally, I just burn to create. Mm -hmm. um, and be, a, you know, we're out here in Colorado. It's just a bit of a John the Baptist kind of thing. And just to cry out in the wilderness, you know, make a way for the Lord. And, and I think that's been a unique calling on new life um, through all these years. And so new life's experienced quite a bit. We are founding pastor. Um, it was a scandal, so we, you know, he was removed, and um, it was a year later, we had a shooting. Mm -hmm. We had two young girls from the same family that were uh, murdered mm -hmm. that day. Um, others were, were, were shot, but were okay. And, I mean, it was, it's kind of, it was quite a miracle that it wasn't worse. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, you know, so our church knows how to limp. Um, mm -hmm. But also, I think a lot of our theology of worship was formed around that suffering, um, around losing our pastor and the shame of that, and then the fear and the despair of, of loss that we experienced right. um, was unlike anything. I mean, when you're literally you know, cleaning blood off mm -hmm. of the floor of your hallway, of church, mm -hmm. that changes everything, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, it changes the race. It changes what am I building, mm -hmm. uh, this tower I'm trying to build to pierce the sky. No, we've been shattered. We've crumbled. Mm -hmm. um, we are nothing. We are ash. What do we do? And that's where we learned worship was so much more important to our legacy and our, um, our story. Mm -hmm. It was more important to our story than we ever realized. Um, so the songs that we started, we started writing out of that, with zero ambition for these songs to do anything outside of this community. The need yeah. in this community was so great that it became so clear and so focused. I think off, like a lot of what this pandemic has done with the uh, COVID, yeah. it just kind of galvanizes focus and it's like, all right, what are we doing? Who are we? Mm -hmm. You know, all these things have been stripped away. Every, you know, mountaintops are low, valleys are high. And that happened to us then. And we, we wrote songs. It wasn't for a movement. It wasn't for... The globe. Yeah. It was for a bunch of people here suffering with fear and shame. Mm -hmm. And that 
that brought a lot of clarity that I think has remained to this day. That was, I mean, that was that was twelve years ago. The shooting was the shooting was twelve years ago, I think. So, yeah. um, and here we are as a church now, still standing. It's just a, a church of faithfulness. It's really showed how, just how, how wild God can be to just to restore, and it showed how strong God's people could be too. Um, so really, when I say we've kind of seen it all, I think we kind of have seen it all. Yeah. Um, so. But anyway, in this, in the rich heritage of this church has been discipleship and training and raising people up. And we have seen ourselves as just no, we have, there is an apostolic calling here, um, but I think it's it's but it's through the focus of just loving on our local body, mm-hmm. and uh, so we've you know I've prayed for years just for the Lord to to continue to add to our team the right people, and um, so in the last few years I've specifically cried out to the Lord for um, for for an expression for us to to raise people up. I think I I'm I have kids who are entered into junior I have twins who've entered into junior high. high. At the desperation event. At the event. So I'm leading when I lead worship desperation, I'm actually leading my own kids. That's uh, kinda changed things for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also in almost twenty years being here, you see the the landscape of modern worship and you kind of see the pitfalls and you see the oop, you know, you want to correct and I think being forty one now it's there's a fathering thing. So I said, how how can we do this and I've mm-hmm. I've seen ten thousand fathers. I'm bringing it back to ten thousand fathers now from afar, and actually it was years ago I spoke at this event about becoming, moving from worship leaders to worship fathers, mothers, and somebody came up to me after after and said, "Do you know Aaron Keys?" Oh. I was like, "Yeah, I, I met him at an event yeah. years ago." He's like, "He's got this thing called ten thousand fathers," right. and so from afar I was like, "Oh, the heart of that," and the, so I started looking into it. It's like, "Oh, the DNA and the yeah. grit of it and the community of it and the." Um, taking things from green rooms to living rooms and like, oh it so the fact that it has come to Colorado Springs is really I selfishly it's just it's because God loves me <laughs> <laughs> that that we has happened <laughs> we definitely feel so the same. I just said a lot the same, I, uh, it's well, a lot to I mean that's so, what's cool um, just yesterday I had breakfast with Glenn Packham and I was asking him what do you think God's called you to do ultimately and, mm-hmm. and the language that he used was I want to provoke worship and spirit and in truth. I was yeah. like, that's awesome. Yeah. Then yeah. I had lunch with Andrew Art. Yeah. And I was like, what do you think God's called you to do? And he said something about like, I want to uh, um, instigate wonder or something wow. like that. Mm. And it's like, this church really has, it's done it in my own life. It's done it in so many. I'm, I'm thinking about the songs that have come out of the church in the last 30 years. I mean, probably when you were just starting the desperation stuff, Ross Parsley was putting out yes. amazing. Yeah. And Jared Anderson and this guy's like the songs. I remember um, before I brag on your songs, um, mm-hmm. just some of the new life songs. Like my brother and I used to geek out listening to Ross Parsley sing um, "Prepare the Way." Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. The yep. King of Glory. Yeah. Into it. it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, he did a version of "Blessed Be the Lord God." It was like yeah. holy cow! Yeah. What is going on here? Uh, there was, <laughs> and then of course like. Some of the most frequent songs we ever sang uh, at our church in Atlanta, and then even with my band on the road, were like some of Jared's songs. Lord, I'm amazed by you. the beauty yeah. of the Lord. Yeah, I will declare the beauty Treasure. of the Lord. Treasure. Yeah. Yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, of course. Those were the early songs. days for us. I know. Yeah. It, was, it was like, yeah. I'm getting chills thinking back yeah. to a lot of those yeah. songs. And then in the last 20 years... Um, songs like Overcome, mm-hmm. um, some mm-hmm. of those Desperation songs that have just been so amazing. Mm-hmm. And then even being here in the last couple months, and we've talked about this, my favorite songs that I've been leading or getting a part of, uh, being a part of just in the in the room and worship have been like Unveil, mm-hmm. Pure Exaltation. Oh, yeah. yes. what you sa- I mean, what you said was already one of my favorite songs in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Um, Dee Wilson was the one who told me about that song. I yeah. was going to lead worship yeah. for an event, and I was like, any fresh songs? She was like, we should do this Egan tune. Yeah. Like, what is this? I was like, oh my god. <laughs> it was the song of the it's event. so strong. You know? yeah, I love it. Was song, um, a couple years ago. So the, the, the legacy of worship that's come out of this church for decades now mm. has... It, it's just special, man. Duh. It's really special. And That's what we're you've wanting. been a very faithful figure in that, stewarding that uh, really well. So just thank, thank you. you on behalf of yes. all the worship leaders whose worship sets have been a lot stronger yeah. because of this church. <laughs> uh, thank you. Oh, no. 
Oh, no, man. thank you. That's, that's amazing. Man. It's cool. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, we're just hoping that the best days are ahead for what God's going to do through more songs and yeah. more leaders and more writers yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, right, right up there on the same <laughs> clip as New Life with songs going around the world, Micah, you're up there. You know, like God's used you, um, the heart that he's developed in you, the even the grace that he's given you with being such a bridge builder with other ministries and other kinds of streams than even your own, it's so inspiring. And I've loved, you know, we've gotten to know each other maybe for the last 10 years or so yeah. almost. Yeah. Um, and right. to be kind of brought back to getting to live in community and to work together is such a dream. Obviously, oh, yeah. once all of this kind of started looking like this could be possible, <laughs> Mike and I were calling each other like every week like, what do you think? <laughs> what are you thinking? You're going. Like, you yeah. yeah. It helps yeah. me yeah. think. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing because we were both kind of on our own paths. Yeah. And we had worked together before, yeah. but somehow through God's just divine favor, it's just been miraculous how those paths have intersected again. Mm -hmm. We weren't necessarily talking together about, oh, let's go to new life together. Ooh. It just so happened that we landed yeah. here at the same time when God's stirring up something yeah. fresh and new. But before I get into that, I just want to yeah. tag along with what you're saying about John. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm not too much younger than you, John, but I'm, gonna I'm, just, for this. I'm just young enough to where when you were releasing those songs at the beginning, I was still a kid in the youth group. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I was 16 year old, mm. you know, and I would be driving around in my car, listening to these albums, just weeping, mm. finding myself in the presence of the Lord, just, you know, dancing to I Am Free, yeah. worshiping to Amaze, yeah. you know, all these songs that just, they've impacted the world, but they impacted my individual life. Mm. They impacted the way I worship. They impacted the way that God just formed me and shaped me, not just as a worship leader, but as a person. Mm. So thank you for your faithfulness mm. all these years. And that's just those songs then, but through the mm. years, all the songs like Aaron was saying that have been released to this thank church, you. I feel like it's just dream come true. I get to be here and 10,000 Fathers gets to, we get to link arms and step into the future together. So man, thank Probably. you, thank you, thank you. But uh, Aaron, I love you, man. Mm. This is so cool to be able to join forces again. I mean, we've always, we've been working together from a distance the past few years. I had the honor of serving in Birmingham with Church of the Highlands. You guys know that whole story. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would still serve as a coach. Mm -hmm. uh, but somewhere deep in my heart, I just knew my time with 10,000 Fathers wasn't done yet. Yeah. And uh, my relationship with Glenn Packham was mm -hmm. through you, Aaron. We yeah. Met, uh, I met him at an event that we were leading worship at in London called Mission Worship. Yeah. And so I've stayed in yeah. touch with Glenn through the years. And um, we were at a songwriting retreat together pretty recently, all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we just started dreaming about yeah. what would it look like if we joined forces. And, you know, I, I'd known about New Life, of course. And I, I knew, like you were talking about, mm -hmm. that you guys walked with a limp and mm -hmm. you've been through so much. But I also knew about a lot of the beautiful things that you guys were stepping yeah. into as a result mm. of what you'd been through. I, I, I love the way that New Life is taking hold of some things that a lot of evangelical churches have left behind. Yeah. Some liturgy, yeah. and tradition, these creeds yeah. and these prayers that a lot of worship ministries have just left behind. Mm -hmm. You guys are reclaiming. Yeah. And not only that, you're not doing it in a way where it feels dead or cold mm -hmm. or tired or religious. You're, you're still moving forward in the power of the Spirit. Mm. There's this prophetic ministry. And every time you lead, John, I mm. see it. There's just this sound that comes out, mm. this roar. Mm. And it's just a beautiful thing to be able to be in a place where we can read an ancient prayer yeah. and sing these yeah. hymns. And, but we're still writing and we're mm -hmm. dreaming about what the yeah. Spirit is doing in the future and in the here and now. And So mm. it's just amazing um, to be able to join forces and... And uh, I, I cannot wait to get back into coaching and teaching yeah. with 10,000 Fathers the way that I was able to in Atlanta when I was there. Uh, actually, the end of last year, I was doing this kind of analysis thing, report of looking back on the past few years of my life and just oh. some of the things that I've done. And, you know, there's songs I've written, there's places I've led worship. But the thing that I felt like uh, gave the most fruit, produced the most fruit in my life or huddles from mm. 10,000 Fathers, which you, it just isn't, it seems counterintuitive because, mm -hmm. you know, we can lead songs to these mass, masses of people. We can write these songs. We can lead these incredible giant ministries. But for some reason, meeting with these six to eight worship leaders every mm. week, that mm. produced the most fruit yeah. in my life. Yeah. And I felt like I was able to contribute to other people's lives. 
in a way that I no couldn't question. just by standing on a stage and leading worship. Right. So I'm so pumped about getting involved again. I'm excited about teaching songwriting again and, mm -hmm. and getting involved in the day-to-day -day stuff. Like I said, we've been in, you know, able to stay in touch from a distance, but just to be able to kind of close in our proximity again and, and, and just work together to, to, oh, it's just a dream come true, man. I'm so stoked about it. So many great relationships, great friendships, and the best is yet to come yeah. in this 3.0 model which is also a really cool song that you've written <laughs> check it out oh man <laughs> maddie mullins little plug amazing <laughs> too. have you heard that no oh, it's good man. i will so right after really this good. yeah and um i was having breakfast this morning with dr pete and um he was talking about you know there are thousands of books worship leaders can read that will help them hundreds of conferences they can attend right there's dozens of retreats he was like but this is different uh, Tenets of Fathers at New Life is different yeah. because it's not just uh, the content. There's great content out there. Thank God, you know? Yeah. I um, mean, it's not even just a nice retreat, although it's going to be a really fun time to be away. I mean, Colorado Springs, it kind of crushes Snellville, Georgia <laughs> when it comes to beauty, you know, <laughs> outdoor. Uh, I think the glory of God is just, it's a little bit more visible. <laughs> it's, we loved the people. Hey, Snowville is the place where everybody's somebody, though. <laughs> that's what, <laughs> that's, that's, that's their city motto. Is that on the sign when you the come town in? motto, yeah. It, the, the motto should have been urban sprawl. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yep. Um, killing culture, uh, one <laughs> acre at a time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I love the people and stuff. Yeah. And actually thinking back, you know, on the, the steps that brought us here, um, God has been so kind to all of us all along the way, like um, to, to express our joy and enthusiasm about what's ahead um, is only possible because of the faithfulness of so many leaders, um, team members, no brothers questions. and sisters who walked with us to bring us to this point. So yeah. I even just think about the last you know, 10 years of 10,000 Fathers in Atlanta, um, there are so many incredible people who helped build this to become ready for 10,000 Fathers yeah. in New Life. You know, yeah. yeah. 10,000 Fathers could not have come to New Life if it hadn't been for all the amazing, uh, man, volunteers, donors, mm -hmm. um, staff yeah. members, coaches, teachers, uh, advisors, counselors, who helped it um, move forward and so, you know, there's a couple months removed now for us of looking back on our time in Atlanta. But the further we get, the more grateful we are. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, there was this poet, Khalil Gibran, who had this line about, you know, as the mountain is clearer to the climber from the plain. Mm. It's like once you're on the face of a mountain, it's hard to see the whole mm. thing. But the further you get, you can you see, see different it. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a great illustration for yeah. living in, in the Colorado, shadow of Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak. <laughs> um, but I, I feel that like the further we get from what was, you know, what's behind us, the more grateful I get, and the clearer I can see we would not be here if mm. it weren't for so many faithful yeah. uh, people who really like invested. Uh, their families, their lives, you know, their futures into this being able to keep moving forward. So uh, I'm just so thankful for how God's moved in mm. the past um, and how that's going to set us up. For well, the and future. I, I could echo that. I, the it is different. I I agree with Dr. Pete. Um, mm. And I, why is it different? You know, because yeah, content is everywhere. But the mm. way you have collected the content, the way you put it together, is is unique. But I think it's 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 the color of your guys' lives, you know, um, just looking at, when we were looking into, is this going to happen? 10,000 fathers going to come to new life. We couldn't talk to one person that knew you, Micah, knew you, Aaron, and, and Megan, Shannon, mm -hmm. that wouldn't say, oh, they have that reaction immediately. Mm -hmm. Those guys, because of this, and Dr. Pete and I went down to Atlanta yeah. to visit with uh, the school, and yeah. you guys were uh, in the midst of, a, of an intensive, we got to meet students, um, and then a bunch of the a bunch of the team that was teaching and mm -hmm. same thing. It's, it's yeah, they were sure they were brilliant, mm -hmm. sure they were talented, but there was like a color mm -hmm. that comes off of you guys, and um, it has come off of Ten Thousand Fathers, um, and that's what I think it makes it unique. And it's mm -hmm. not strategy that has d done it. I think there is a culture mm -hmm. that has done it, and and I've, I just just re just pers just relationally, I've just loved being around you guys and. Um, I go, oh, this, I, I want to be like these guys. Mm -hmm. um, 
So it, it, there is something different. And I, I, I think that's what it is coming in from the outside a bit. I see it that way. And I think that's what Dr. Pete's touching on. Yeah, that's mm. encouraging. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and, and um, we obviously hope that lots of our friends from Atlanta will be able to come out and have input into these intensives. Yeah. Um, those are priceless uh, relationships that have lasted for a couple decades there too. Um, but the strength of the teaching, uh, you know, like the faculty, <laughs> the teaching facility that becomes available yeah. here, I'm just like, what is going mm. on? This is going to mm -hmm. be like too strong. <laughs> uh, like I'm going to have to, like, we're going to have to dumb some stuff down because but, the yeah. number of incredible, like godly, anointed uh, teachers and leaders that will be a part of these intensives right. uh, the next season is going to be like, it's stunning to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what's so unique, I think, about New Life is their dream to, to partner with the academy. Yeah. You know, a lot of churches, not to poke yeah, yeah. at them, but, you know, they're, they're, they're at odds with the academy. Mm. You know, they see the academy as just a separate entity. Mm. That, you know, we're all just moving in our own directions. But New Life's dream of integrating both streams. I think that's what's going to be such a strength for 10,000 fathers in the future. I was just listening to the Essential Church podcast this morning yeah. that Glenn and yeah. Daniel and Andrew, yeah. somebody or Pastor Brady, they're all on. And uh, Glenn was interviewing N.T. Wright. Yeah. I'm just sitting here thinking this is this is just too too much. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is gold yeah. um, that we get to be a part of a place that values mm. these incredible theologians mm -hmm. and this rich tradition, so I, I'm pumped to see how that dynamic uh, plays mm. as well. It's gonna be I think beautiful, and we also value just each other so much. It's it's. Uh, I think when you've suffered together, you realize, wow. I remember I looked at Glenn. It was right after the um, shooting. It's just you know what are we gonna do? And I remember mm. I said to him, it's kind of just thought came to my mind. It's kind of carried a lot of us was. I'll work construction if I continue doing it with you, with if we could continue doing it together. So I think that mm. has made community such a val um, such a deep value to us. And so, so we learn from each other, and we could do it together. We could rise and fall together, and um, and hope. And we get to release music together. And if that music fails, we fail together. Mm. If it succeeds, whatever that even looks like, it's together. Mm. So I think that's that's a deep value here. So I think that's what. Tim one of the reasons 10,000 Fathers, because it's ha held that value yeah. Yeah. from the beginning. I mean, how long has 10,000 Fathers yeah. been I mean, in existence? This, this will be, I think, the 14th year yeah. of the school, and then we were, we were doing training before uh, we had people living with us. Right. So it's probably about 20, a little more than 20 years of pouring into worship mm -hmm. leaders and trying to raise that worship leaders, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, this name, this expression of it like this is... It's, I think it's just one of the reasons why it's felt like a, kind of a Pretty couple streams coming into this river. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. Mm. I love it. And that was my story. Mm. I was the lonely worship leader who felt incompetent and insecure, mm. didn't know how to lead. You know, I could lead songs, didn't know how to lead people. Mm. And 10,000 Fathers, like you said at the beginning, mm. moving from green rooms to living rooms, yeah. being in a living room, yeah. being in a community, that was the antidote. Yeah. That was the the healing agent. No hiding. Yeah, there was no hiding. Yeah. It was, mm -hmm. it wasn't me just listening to a podcast. Although podcasts are great, yeah, it wasn't yeah. me just, you know, trying to find that song to give me that next uh, bit of energy or encouragement that I needed. Although that's beautiful as mm -hmm. well. It was a community that was able to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and was able to share my struggles with, bear my burdens with, and. Oh man, it was just, mm. it was the, the thing that I needed that I didn't know I needed, yeah. you know? So to walk into a living room to find people that wrap their arms around me. And, and that's what's so beautiful about 10,000 Fathers. It's, it's not just a classroom experience, right. it's an immersive experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to be able to bring the living room and the sanctuary together mm. with New Life, this place where... We're going to get that hands-on mm. ministry training. We're going to get that uh, ecclesiology that we need so desperately. So mm. it's it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful partnership. So good. Agreed. Um, well, let's start to land this plane. I'm just looking at our time. Um, <laughs> we could go a while. I think we could get it. <laughs> we, we have a pretty amazing Marco Polo uh, Oh, gosh. 
and some of the messages, John and I, when we Marco Polo each other, we call them podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's long. It's so <laughs> long. And then an hour later. Yeah. I'm going to also start a, a petition to get the double speed back. I'm oh, like, yeah. Uh, I'm not paying. I'm, I'm not, not paying, paying either. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Oh. If you're listening, oh, no. yeah. they don't care about this. They don't seem to. <laughs> care about oh, my gosh. But I just wonder, um, you know, our, our intensives... Uh, Ten thousand miles of new life will be in the fall and in the spring. So October and May, mm. that'll kind of be the the rhythm moving forward. So there's that's that's awesome. But you guys have so much stuff that the Lord's constantly doing in you, revelation He's giving you, um, mm. stuff He's speaking to you. I just wonder if we could wrap this conversation with just one word of encouragement or challenge that you would want to give to worship leaders who are just listening to this conversation. You know, they're leading in the church, they're figuring out uh, COVID and. Uh, transitioning back to gathering it's a weird time to be yeah. a worship leader yeah. like yeah. lots of curveballs yeah. um, there's there's r- racial tensions everywhere yeah. right. there's a pandemic yeah. there's a recession like it's it's a yeah. hard time yeah uh, it's a really hard time to lead well right and yeah. uh, strong leaders are taking flack from every angle yeah. right mm. so yeah. I just wonder um, if there's any encouragement or word that you would want to speak to leaders listening to this um to either, you know, not grow weary and doing good, or mm-hmm. to think about something that they might be needing to reconsider. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Want to go? All right. Totally I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, oh, go ahead. Oh. Oh, nice. <laughs> We're in I hope you don't say what I was going to say. <laughs> uh, well, you go. <laughs> no, you go. Okay. <laughs> I would say um, this is such a great season to return. Um, I love. I love the passage in Revelation where Jesus is saying, oh, you've done it all, all the great strategy, all the clever things, well done. But you forsake, you forsook the things that you did at first, and the first love. And um, so I think seasons like this, and I think because I've walked through seasons like this, they help, oh, yeah, return back to worship. Um, man, I just think worship makes so much sense mm-hmm. in a time like this because it's, it's connected to a world to come. It's connected to a hope to come. It's connected to these things that are not yet, but we have a, uh, a chance to kind of declare those things now and bring them into present realities. So to lead worship in this season has felt so simple. Um, and it's felt like the first things. So return to the first things. You might be alone. You're in a, you know, I don't have the community that you guys are talking about. Yeah, but you have a song to sing over your community. You have a song to sing of truth that taps into a future reality that can eke its way into this reality. Return. Simplify this thing. Think about what's really going on in the world. Stop trying to be so clever. Build a culture of simplicity and truth and return. Mm, So good, man. Love that. I think was, I would say, say no. It's not, thankfully, <laughs> I think I would say it's not time to retreat. It's time to embrace. Mm. I think about the Jesus who went and touched the leper, the Jesus mm. who washed the feet of the disciples. I have a personality that I, when things get chaotic or you know it feels like things are spinning out of control, I want to retreat. I want to isolate. I want to hide away. Mm. But. The time is, it's time now to embrace. It's time to love our neighbor. Mm. It's time to be a voice. It's time to lift a new sound Mm. of worship. It's time to repent, Mm. to return like you're talking about. Um, And for me, especially on social media and things like that, it's just easy to want to just make it all disappear. But um, man, I think it's, it's more than ever, we need the church to rise up and be the hands and feet. Jesus, mm-hmm. that's it. Amen. That's what Pastor Brady was challenging us with the other day in our mm. uh, staff meeting. Yeah. He was just mm-hmm. saying, everyone is very tender right now. Right. Yeah. Be exceedingly kind. kind. That's good. Oof, that's, that's a good word. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard not to get just ignited by the same fire that you're trying to put out. Yeah, you know, sure. Just take on the spirit uh, that you're trying to fight against. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. And yeah, just to encourage all of our you know, leaders who are paying attention to this, your teams are weary. Yeah. Your, le- your leader, your pastor, your boss mm-hmm. um, might really need your uh, your covering right now yeah. and your encouragement right now. Yeah, your grace. Um, yeah. A lot of grace, yeah. yeah. Um, and I was talking to um, one of the leaders that is in one of my huddles this week. We were talking for a long time, and he was saying, 
you know, uh, he might not be able to, they might not be able to sing for this next season yeah. of the church. Wow. Yeah. And he's like, what, what's my job? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, bro, we've been talking about this for 15 months. <laughs> yeah. Your job so isn't to good. Be singing, yeah. it's to lead worship. It's yeah. so good. Um, and so don't be discouraged. Uh, this is a great opportunity to be forced out of your default mode of worship leadership. Mm. And it might take a little creativity and sure. uh, yeah. intentionality. But great opportunity to continue to lead our people in worship, maybe even in ways that might be harder to do in the in the normal mm-hmm. season. Yeah. Uh, but what a great chance to introduce, um, you know, scriptural meditation, mm. um, lectio divina, silence, um, yeah, instrumental, yeah, music, instrumental, yeah, uh huh, antiphonal so stuff, yeah. like good, call and response, and and so uh, just to encourage leaders. I know that it's not like it was, and it might not be again for a long time. Mm-hmm. But um, that does not mean that there's not a credible opportunity that God's. That Jesus said, "My Father is always working." Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's just figure out what does that look like for our context, yeah. there, even if it looks different than how He was working a year ago. Yeah. This time. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so, good. We've been. I, I feel like worship leaders around them, in the West at least, have been crying out for a disruption of sorts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not saying this is it. I'm not saying God. I'm not yeah. at all saying God caused this. Sure. But a disruption is what we've needed to kind of wake up a people who've kind of an over-entertained culture, mm-hmm. who have it all. We're kind of helping them try to bring a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice of praise? Mm-hmm. Just right. please my ears, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're, and all of a sudden it's going, people are, this disruption has caused people to kind of perk up and say, okay. Mm-hmm. Who is this Jesus? What is this faith thing? We've seen so many people on the fringes coming back to to church online maybe, but hitting us up and saying, okay, I feel safe with this. Uh, Can the Lord use this as a beautiful, glorious disruption? Mm -hmm. I think he can. That's what he does. He climbs into these messes and he just makes beauty. So I love what you're saying, Aaron, about what are creative ways now to do this that would feel uncomfortable in the normal, but now actually... It makes sense. I was David playing his harp over Saul. Someone have a guitar out there that could, you know, you're not allowed to sing. Your yeah. governor said no singing. And, yeah. You know, play. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's so good. I em- embrace it. It's good word. Yeah. And, uh, so if another, anything, oh, I was just saying, if anything, you know, illusions are crashing down and we're having to come face to face with the real. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. That's frightening, you know, to come face to face with our mortality or our fragility. It's frightening. Right. It's a frightening place to be in. But like you said, I think it could be a beautiful place to yeah. be in, yeah. where we recognize our need once again, and uh, the entertainment of worship comes crashing right. down, and we return to fasting, weeping, and mourning. And, We're not in control. Oh, yeah, yeah. Control. Our desperate. Speaking need. of illusions, yeah. mm-hmm. never were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Coming back to a, a deep reverence, even. Deep yeah, that's good. For the holiness of God. And, oh, yeah, we could talk about this. I know. <laughs> I know. We're switching gears. I, I feel it. Yeah. I know. You better save Sorry, us. Sorry, Aaron. Uh, what were you going to say? <laughs> the wheels are about to touch down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pull up. Because Pull up. Of, yeah, everything that you guys have just said, because it's such a weird season, uh, I think I would love for worship leaders who are listening to know that you don't have to figure this out on your own. Um, it's really tricky, and you don't have to walk through this alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't even think that these worship leaders, like worship leaders, they just need to be encouraged. I think they need to be empowered. Yeah, uh, they need to be surrounded, known. Um, they need impartation. They need mm-hmm. a lot more than inspiration. You know, so mm-hmm. good. Um, this is, of course, what we've been about from the beginning at Test of Fathers, and um, so we just want to invite you guys. Hey, you know, come hang with us in Colorado Springs. Um, this is just a few of the people on this team and in this culture, but um, the other two you're not seeing right now are actually way better than us, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But oh, we, yeah. just, we would be so That's honored. That's why we're, they're not here. Yeah. <laughs> Let them in. That's right. <laughs> uh, we'd be so honored uh, to get to know you more and um, to hear from you and to walk with you. So thanks for checking this out, and hopefully we'll get, hope to see you sometime in the future.